Well, hello, Internet, and welcome to part seven of my Java video tutorial series. Today, I'm going to show you how to create classes from which you can then create objects. And along the way, I'm going to talk about a whole bunch of things in regards to classes and some theory in regards to object-oriented programming. Okay, so let's just jump right into this. I decided I'm going to make a monster class, and I'm going to name it Monster. And this could basically be looked at as a way you would approach how to design like a video game. Now, don't get crazy here. This isn't going to be an advanced video game. Just gonna be a simple one. Now, like we said before, public means this class can be used by other classes, and class names should begin with a capital letter like I did right there with monster. Just a couple little rules we should follow. And just so you know this, a file cannot contain two public classes, so you can't do that. However, it can contain classes that are not public. So as long as you don't have two public classes, you can have multiple classes. And don't worry about it. If you place two class files in the same folder, the Java compiler will be able to find them, figure out everything. Okay, so what can we put in a class definition, which as I've said in the past, is just a blueprint for objects or whatever you want to call them. Well, you can throw constants inside of them. So let's say that the constant for every monster is it's going to have a tombstone when it dies that says here lies a dead monster. So that's a constant. That's a string. We're going to get more into strings later on. That's how you define that constant. Then also, what's good about creating objects and using classes to define how they should work out is you want to use as many private class variables or what they're supposed to be called fields. So you can either refer to them as class variables or fields depending on if you're taking a test or whatever. They're supposed to be called fields. So we want to define something as private meaning that only the object can change the values inside of these guys. So we want to say our monster should only be able to change its health. Just trying to think of things. The attack points that it has maybe. Just defining some integers here. This isn't that complicated movement. Uh, let's say we're going to use some sort of grid-based system and we want to say that this monster can only move two spaces per turn. Uh, another thing, we're using a grid-based system. We might also have position be something else. X position, Y position, you know. I'm going to set that at zero. This is just sort of like some things you should think about and some things that should be kept private or protected maybe a better way. And also we want to monitor if our monster is alive or dead and remember that Boolean values can only have a value of true or false. Okay, so there I did. I created a whole bunch of different fields or class variables that I'm going to be able to work with here to help my monster game move along. And of course, you can also have public variables and let's just create a name. Let's give people the option of changing the monster's name. So let's just give him big monster is a default name. Hopefully it's not a little monster. And you should have as few public fields as humanly possible. Always aim to keep these private until you absolutely find some crazy reason why you have to make them public. Well then, after you have all your fields or class variables defined, what do you need? Well, you need some methods or functions that are gonna be able to set these private fields up here because there's no other way to set them. So what you need to do is like, let's say we want to be able to find out what the attack value is. Well, there's no way to get it because it's private up here. See, attack, it's private. So if we want to access these variables, we have to provide them with the option to go and ask us for these values. And what you want to do with object-oriented programming is try to protect this information and not allow people to willy-nilly go in here and change things. Because what happens if you only accept an integer like we have here for attack with 20 and they try to go and change your attack value to a decimal or a double or whatever. It's not going to work. So what this guy's going to do here for us is it's going to provide the ability for the person to find out what the attack value is without going in and accessing it. And unless you can figure some reason for them to go in there and be able to change that attack value, don't allow them to do it. And I'm going to keep this very simple as we go through here and thought, okay, well, how quickly can you move? Well, all this is going to do is it's going to return that value. It's going to return the value of movement. And these are called accessor methods, meaning they have access to the value of these private variables up here. But we keep them protected. And another thing is uh, it'd be very, very helpful to be able to find out what the health is for this monster so that we know if we have killed it or not. So what are we going to do? We're just going to return that value again. So it's real simple. That's all we're doing here. So let's move in. Now that we got some of the basics down, we might also want to have a public method inside of our class definition. And void, again, means it doesn't return any value. And let's say that we want them to be able to set the health for our monster, meaning that the monster has been attacked. And at this point in time, 
I'm thinking, okay, well, I should allow them to do that because I want an easy way to have them be able to change that health. So what am I gonna do? I'm gonna say health is equal to whatever the current value of health is for our monster minus decrease health. So that's all we're gonna do with that. Of course, we could have different checks and things inside of here, and why don't we just put one in? So let's say if health is less than zero, what we wanna do in this situation is we want to set the value of alive equal to false. So that's just a little check that we have inside of there, and one of the benefits of object-oriented programming. If we allowed them to come in here and just willy-nilly change the health, eventually health might end up having a negative value, the monster's dead, and we're still attacking it. No point in attacking a dead monster. Okay, so let's continue on here. So what, are we else, what else are we gonna do? We're gonna go public void set health. What we're gonna be able to do with this is, let's say they do pass a double value somehow you know, a value that has a decimal place in it. Well, what you can do inside object-oriented programming is create what are called overloaded methods. So this means if, since I have set health here and I have set health here, I have the same method, but with a different attribute inside of it. By doing this, this is called overloading. What it allows me to do is to be able to handle double values if they're sent, or integers if they are sent. And you can pretty much create as many of these as you want. You could have this be floats, you could have it be booleans for some crazy reason. You could have as many of these methods with the same set health name as long as the attributes in here are different. You, however, cannot just simply overload by sending, let's say that each of these returned, like this returned an integer and this returned a double as a value, but the attributes are the same. That doesn't work that way. So whenever you're thinking about overloading, think only not about what the return values are going to be, but what the attributes are. As long as you create a whole bunch of methods with different attributes, you're fine. That's how you overload. You don't overload in any other way. So in this situation, they send a double. So I want to fix that. So I go int decrease health is equal to, and let's cast this. Let's make this an integer, and let's change decrease health. I'm just sort of like doing this out of my head. If you have any questions, leave them down below. I'll be more than happy to answer them. And then we're gonna take health, just like we did before, minus int decrease health, boom, just like that. And then we could also come in here and do our little check that we had right here. Actually, I could have copied and pasted this before, but I didn't. And there you go, that's how you overload methods. Remember, same name, different attributes sent. So that's all that's going on with that. And then you come to what's called the constructor. Constructor is just like a setup function or method. Whenever a new object based off of this class is created, the first function that is called is called the constructor method. And it will be executed only when the object is created based off of the blueprint that the class defines. It will only be executed one time and never again. And another thing to understand is it has to have the same name as your class. So the name of this class is monster. So the constructor also has to have the value of monster or the name monster. And in this situation, we're going to go uh, allow them to pass new health, new attack, so that whenever they define a new monster, remember, this class is just a blueprint. We're allowed to change the blueprint, however, or not, depending upon what we want to do here. And there we go. So this is the first time you'll see a constructor. And what's going to happen is they're going to want to create a new monster. And in this situation, they want to change both the health, the attack, and the movement values for said monster. Kind of boring if every single monster in your video game has exactly the same attack and health and everything else. And we're going to get more complicated as this tutorial progresses. And here all I'm doing is just setting the values for this new monster. And if it helps you at all, you could think of these objects as being just totally self-contained programs or whatever that just have a whole bunch of variables and a whole bunch of methods inside of them. Just remember, a constructor is only executed once per object, and the constructor also, I didn't mention this before, you cannot put void inside of here. The constructor cannot have a return value of any type, so just leave it that way. And you could also come in here and create multiple different constructors. So let's say they want to create a monster and they don't send any values. Well, this is expecting values up here. If you don't send them, everybody's gonna get upset about that. So we're gonna come in here and create a second constructor. This is overloading the constructor or creating multiple constructors that are allowed to accept multiple attributes. In this situation, three up here. In this situation, none. So overloading that guy. 
And in this situation, we're going to leave it this way. And also what's kind of interesting to note is if you do not create a constructor of any type, this is the default constructor, meaning it does nothing. The method exists, but it doesn't do anything. However, if you do create a constructor file like we did right here, this guy's never created. So just understand this only is created by the Java interpreter if you do not define any constructor. And another thing this might be interesting to also bring up. Let's say in this situation that the person, like let's say I had health up here instead of new health, okay? And that would cause some confusion because you have health down here which pertains to your object, but this has the same value and then mass confusion ensues. So what would we do in that situation? Well, let's just do it. Let's cause some mass confusion. I'm going to come in here, I'm going to get rid of that new name. And how would I be able to then reference the actual health for my monster I'm creating here instead of these attributes that were passed over? Quite simply, this. This is a reference to the actual objects, variables. So that's what that is. And in multiple different programming languages, if you use the term this, that is a reference to whatever object you're currently working with. So this dot health is the same as, scroll up here, this guy right here. And remember, each object has these variables installed or fields inside of it. So if you don't pick up on everything in this tutorial, don't worry about it. We're going to cover it later on. And something else to remember is you can also use the this keyword for constructors because this as a method is a reference to the constructor. And I'm going to come in here and I'm just going to do some little jazz here. I'm going to delete this in a second. But let's say you come in here and you create a constructor file. Public and monster and int and new health or what have you. So you just created this guy. And what it does is it goes health is equal to new health. Right like that. Well, let's say if you also want to create another construction file, again, monster, and this guy receives not only health, but also receives int new attack. So different ways to create monsters. Sometimes we just want the health and we want to use the default values that are set. And sometimes we want to set the attack also. Well, this function already sets the health up here. So wouldn't it be really cool if we could just send this health attribute up to this guy and have him execute it. We actually can. If you type in this and then take new health, right like that, that's exactly what's gonna happen. And then what we would do is just go attack is equal to new attack. And if you're not quite getting this, don't worry about it. This is kind of a more advanced topic. We're gonna be covering this more later. But simply what happens is it jumps into this guy because two attributes are sent. And this right here is a call to this. Remember, when we're overloading methods, it pays attention to the attribute. Well, there's only one attribute in this constructor, and this is a reference to constructors inside of our program. So this guy's executed right here. And then we assign the attack value just like we did before. Like I said, if you don't quite get that, don't worry about it. We're going to cover it later. All right, so got rid of that, and we're going to continue on here. Okay, so now I've defined the whole entire class and everything that I need to be able to create these monster objects. Now I'm going to explain something a little bit more to you right here on the screen in regards to what it means by having private variables. Now I'm still inside my monster.java file right now, and I'm going to show you something that I don't really see people go over very often. Now let's say inside of here, I create public static void main, like we've seen before in the previous tutorials. Inside of this guy, I'm going to show you how to create a new object, but this is wrong. But I just want you to understand exactly what's going on here. Now, if you want to create a object based on this class, and I'm going to call this monster Frank, this is how you do it. Now I'm going to go monster right here. And what did I just call? With this right here, I actually called the constructor file right there. So that's what's going on. But I'm going to elaborate here. Now, this has all kinds of default values assigned to it, meaning for Frank the monster. Now, since I am in the class, I can actually go system out print and then go Frank and attack right like this. And even though attack is a field, and as we saw before, I went and commented all this. That's what all that extra information is. Again, you can see all the comments underneath the video. This is private. So why do I think I can print this out on the screen? Well, I actually know I can print it out on the screen. I'm going to execute it just to prove it to you. And you can see right there it shows up. The reason why I'm able to print out to screen this private field is because I'm inside of the class. Hopefully that makes sense to you. Now I'm going to jump outside of the class. And I'm going to create a new class. And this is how you are supposed to use classes. And I'm going to call it Lesson 7. 
Very, very important to understand this concept so that you don't get confused here. And then inside of here, I'm gonna go public, static, void, main again, string, create myself a new one of these guys, and of course spell public right. So now I have a new main, and I'm gonna create another object just like I just previously did inside of the class, but this time I mean, it's outside of the class. And because monster.java is in the same folder as Java Lesson 7, we're gonna be able to locate that class and just instantly use it, just like we were using it before. And there I created a new object named Frank, and Frank name, I'm gonna be able to assign to this. So let's just call it Frank, just to keep everything nice and easy. And the reason why I'm able to do this is because name is public. And if we jump over here, you're gonna see that name is indeed public. See right here, big monster by default, but it's public. So I can set that value. But, however, even though Frank has a default, well, let's just jump over into this monster area and just copy and paste it. You're going to see, if I try to print out the attack value for Frank in this other class, what's going to happen? Let's execute it. And you can see it's already given me errors. The reason why, the field monster.attack is not visible. That means it is private because I am not trying to access it from inside of the class, but instead I'm trying to access it from outside of the class. Now, I can still print it out, so I can just go in here, for example, and say, Frank name, because that is public, and put has an attack of right like that, and then I can use my accessor function to be able to get the attack the right way, and that is get attack, followed by my little quotes, and now you can see here, if I execute this, that it's going to say Frank has an attack of 20. So that's something that you really need to understand. You can access private variables or fields inside of the class itself, like I did here with this main function inside of monster.java. However, outside of the class, you can only access them if there are accessor functions that allow me to do so. So there was a whole bunch about object-oriented programming. You leave any questions or comments below. I'm going to continue teaching more about object-oriented programming coming up next. Till next time.